What's up everybody? Welcome back to Exotic Astrology once again and today we will discuss how is the new year 2018 going to start. Yes, yes, yes. Today is the video on January horoscope. All right. So let us see how the new year which is almost on the corner is going to start and how are events going to unfold during the month and how is it going to end because there is a lunar eclipse at the end of January. All right. If you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed, then probably in the new year you should subscribe. <laughs> Please subscribe to it somewhere in the link below. And if you want a personal consultation, and please approach me in my website Vedic Renaissance and if you have any questions queries or comments regarding this video or any other video in my channel or if you want me to make any other video then please let me know in the comments your comments suggestions are very valuable to me okay and if you like this video then click the thumbs up at the end and before I begin as I always say God is there with you all the time just look to him and he will be there at least in 2018 <laughs> all right so there are so many events which are happening so i have made my notes now january 2018 how is it starting well let's start with mercury mercury is retrograde now because today i'm making this video on 20th and mercury is still retrograde for two more days that is why we are seeing all these problems which are happening in communication i'm sending mails to somebody but they are saying oh we never get your mails all right <laughs> i'm sending mails to people and then i'm seeing in my outbox the mail is not going sometimes people are sending me mails but there's no subject in them all right so these are typical symptoms of mercury retrograde but mercury is going to be direct by 22nd of december and when the new year starts it will be in Scorpio okay it is direct now see what happens mercury was retrograde from Sagittarius it went back to Scorpio and then now from Scorpio it is again turning direct by beginning of January that means mercury went into sag in December but it felt no 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 I must go back to Scorpio no? all right so things related to communication which are very hidden which are very secretive which people were trying to hide some documents or some scandals anything related to mercury those things because it's the sign of scorpio you see those things will be coming out all right and it has already come out since it has gone retrograde and then now when it's going direct it is like okay let me clean the mess whatever is there so scorpio energy will be very prominent in communication we need to take care of that till uh, the first week of january when mercury is still in the sign of scorpio we do not get into any unnecessary debates quarrels because scorpio is ultimately the sign ruled by mars all right so it can happen that we go into unnecessary debates all right trying to prove ourselves logically or with argumentation so we must take care that we don't begin the new year by that way okay so that is what i have to say regarding january 1st and then we all know the positions rahu is in cancer ketu is in capricorn saturn is in sagittarius jupiter mars is in libra and sun venus are also in sag we will see to that and then moon is in gemini and on 2nd january we have the full moon in gemini okay now rahu is in cancer and ketu is in capricorn as we know september august of 2017 it transited into these signs rahu into cancer and ketu into capricorn that is why we are seeing people are becoming more and more emotional and people are having a look on their work which is capricorn that is this giving me fulfillment and if that is not giving them fulfillment they are planning to change their karma okay because capricorn is the sign of karma and ketu is it sitting there so tendency of ketu is to separate you from those things which don't give you higher fulfillment okay ketu is a malefic as per astrology but when you take to spirituality ketu is a very big benefit it is equally a benefit like jupiter all right and rahu is in cancer that is why rahu shows where the focus is where the obsession is all right what people are trying to gain so when rahu ketu sits in cancer and capricorn people are always concerned am i happy in life in my home and in my work so these dynamics are playing 
all right and then we have jupiter mars in the sign of libra which is going on from december itself yes this is known as a very powerful yoga which is known as guru mangal yoga now this is happening in the sign of libra what is libra libra is the sign originally present in the seventh house that means people will become very much aggressive and very much headstrong very determined very positive because it's like jupiter is the guru and mars is the soldier now you have told that the soldier that look this person is there to guide you to help you all right so now mars will become much more strong there uh, otherwise mars doesn't like the sign of libra very much because mars doesn't like to listen to other people but now because mars has one of the biggest benefits and jupiter is also a great friend to mars yes that is why mars will be very happy now to stay in the sign of libra although it is leaving libra very soon but till the time it is in libra for the next 12 days i guess i mean till 12th or 13th of january you will see that in the areas of relationships people are taking lot of new initiatives people those who are single they are planning to go out and date people and they are wanting to get into new relationships that is happening because mars is in libra and now people because jupiter is also there people are feeling very positive people are feeling that yes we will meet new people we will exchange ideas libra is basically what exchanging of ideas you say this i say that okay you are also right i am also right but maybe some things are not right so let's agree to disagree right that is the sign of libra it's the sign of contracts deals negotiations where you try to come to a middle ground taking into consideration both the extremes okay libra doesn't like to go to extremes that's more of the tendency of aries so libra says no no what you think is right what i think is also right let's stay somewhere in between let's do this and let's come to a compromise so now you will see that people the new year will kick off like that whenever it comes to relationships or within existing relationships suppose you are married then you will be like okay i want that this happens but okay you are saying that let me try to see how is it happening okay and then the other person will also be like okay let's try to negotiate let's try to manage this is because jupiter is there in libra otherwise if mars would be there alone then it it would have been a very aggressive placement but thank god jupiter is there okay so the new year kicks off with jupiter mars in the sign of libra and then we have saturn venus and sun in the sign of sagittarius now what is saturn saturn is duty structure commitment hard work effort perseverance tenacity all this is saturn and what is sun sun represents commitment sun is the power in the chart sun says i will do this whatever happens i don't care who says what all right so and what is venus venus is our comfort zone basically in one word if i have to summarize what venus is venus and moon represents our comfort zones all right that means when saturn sun are together i will talk to talk about venus later but when saturn and sun are placed together in any chart or in transit for that particular month because sun will be there for only one month then we will realize that whatever we think we should do yes that is the sun saturn will tell no no if you think it is not going to work you also have to do now all right so this can be a very good combination or this can be a difficult combination because saturn may keep telling us okay see you are not good at this you are not good at that see you can't do this you can't do that saturn will point out the flaws now that is for our good only because sometimes the sun which is the ego is very bloated the ego thinks yes i will do anything whatever i want i'm not talking of uh, sun rahu here but i'm talking of in general sun yes because the sun is a very hot planet it's the largest uh, it's the biggest thing out there in the sky yes that means it represents that part within us who thinks that we can do anything whatever we like but when sun comes with saturn it's like our ideals our belief systems i'm not talking of jupiter here but jupiter is our spiritual belief systems belief in something higher than this yes but sun represents our belief in general what we believe in ourselves can i can i do this what do i think can i do that yes so when sun comes in contact with saturn you will see that your ideals your ideas your hopes wishes and desires come in contact with reality so now if 
whichever house Capricorn is falling in your chart, you will see that regarding those house, those houses or whichever houses Saturn and Sun are ruling in your chart. Okay. For now, let us take one example. Suppose you are a Capricorn ascendant. Oh no, let's take Sagittarius because this is happening in Sagittarius. All right. So then you will see things pertaining to your body because see Saturn is already there in Sag and now Sun has also come. All right. So then you will see that things pertaining to your body if you are a Sagittarius ascendant that you may have lot of plans okay I will join the gym I'll do this I'll do that but then now this is happening so if you can't go to the gym you will feel like oh I can't go now because now Saturn is telling you that look look just by thinking it will not happen you have to also go to the gym so this is a very powerful time to act on what we believe we can do and if we act on it then we will definitely see results okay and what Sagittarius is Sagittarius is basically the original ninth house it's the sign of dharma religion spirituality all right Pisces is the sign of moksha where we let go of everything and and tell that okay god you decide whatever you want to do yes but in Sagittarius we focus on our belief systems all right so wherever Sagittarius is, our belief systems are very strong regarding those areas or wherever Jupiter is placed. All right. So we need to take care that we don't only go on higher beliefs. For example, we don't only think that, okay, this mantra is good, that mantra is good. But we also take up the mala and we chant the mantras. Okay. Because just by having appreciation for a mantra, we are not getting to we are not going to get benefited by that yes we have to chant the mantra also only then the benefit will be complete okay and then we also have venus now now venus is combust which means it is very close to the sun saturn is also combust mercury is also combust okay i mean it will be combust all these three for till the end of uh, january because they are very close to the sun now what happens is when Venus comes in contact with Saturn and Sun, then we are forced to let go of those things which are coming in our way of higher fulfillment. All right. So let me give you an example. Suppose you are partying all the time with some group of friends. But now suppose you are a Sagittarius rising. Now this combination is happening in your first house, Saturn, Sun and Venus that means now you are seeing that because of my bad habits which is in one way Venus partying and drinking smoking my first house which is my body my whole life is getting affected I'm not able to work I'm not able to sleep I'm not able to study then there will be some element of pain because of which we will have to let go of certain bad habits all right of certain things like luxury for example if you are in the time of studying you are just watching facebook or you are just having a good time basically or you are not putting focus in your work suppose if this is happening in your 10th house all right for a pisces ascendant then you will realize that now you have to let go of certain pleasures for higher fulfillment so that it benefits you ultimately okay so this is a good time to ch have a reality check on what are the things that we are running behind those materialistic pleasures which have been promised by the materialistic civilization of today okay so we need to have a reality check that is it actually giving us some level of fulfillment or is it not giving or is it just like okay just do it is it only because of that so if that is the case then we will see that we are forced to let go of certain things for our higher fulfillment and that may include some aspects of our belief system also suppose we believe that okay this thing is going to work but because sag is the sagittarius is the sign of beliefs right but now we are seeing that okay for me to achieve this goal i have to let go of this belief system and then you will be like okay yes that is very good and we need to let go of that okay or we might make new structure make new commitments also in regards to belief systems then on 2nd January, we have the full moon, which is happening in Gemini. That means <coughs> the new moon happened in Sagittarius. Yes, on 17th of December, which means sun and moon were together in the sign of Sagittarius. And now when Sagittarius has sun and moon, that means new beliefs, new structures, new systems of thought within ourselves were 
initiated by these planetary combinations but now when the moon is going and it's reaching gemini then what happens is we come to see whatever initiatives we had taken in sagittarius in course of our belief systems in course of our gurus religion spirituality how much of that has actually come to completion that is what the moon starts and it's going 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 and it's approaching the full moon yes then we will come to know which of our belief systems is going to work and which of them is not going to work and which of them are not going to work we will change it because gemini is the sign of change because it's the original third house so now suppose we had a belief system okay from today i will do this then then it goes to gemini then we are saying oh this is not working then we will change it so that is the dynamics of the new moon and the full moon and then on 6th january we see mercury is joining these three planets sun venus and saturn in the sign of sagittarius so sagittarius is becoming a crazy sign on 6th <laughs> because there are four planets my god and that too there are planets like sun and saturn so now what is happening is all three are uh, in combustion saturn's uh, mercury and venus combust means they are very close to the sun that means whichever houses mercury venus and saturn are ruling things regarding those houses we may feel that we are not able to see the effects the results all right because see, basically what sun does is sun is telling you need to purify this okay so when venus is near to the sun sun is telling no 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 you have to purify this because sun is a very hot planet purification is sometimes painful so for libra ascendants taurus ascendants gemini virgo aquarius and capricorn the month of january can be a bit difficult because your trine and lords lords of the first fifth and ninth which is mercury venus and saturn for all these six lagnas they may feel that they are not able to find fulfillment within themselves all right but always remember when that happens this is for you to purify yourselves and to let go of certain things which are holding you back because what happens when you put uh, gold into fire it burns right and then it shines more so use this time very positively to take new initiatives and to put things in the ground so that you do not stay in the air in the clouds and then you proclaim that oh this is not working that is not working no it's not going to happen like that all right so all these three are combust by the sixth and then on 15th we have sun venus and ketu entering the sign of capricorn i mean ketu is already there so now sagittarius sun venus we had our belief systems we were very positive yes we will do things the new year has kicked in new year resolutions and then now we go into capricorn which is the sign of work structure duty commitment the original 10th house the sign of saturn so now sun is telling enough of your belief systems now is the time to put things into practice all right so now when sun enters capricorn on 15th roughly with venus then we will see that we are forced to execute the things that we were inspired by yes that's what happens people take a lot of new year resolutions but then when sun enters capricorn that will actually tell us how many of the new year resolutions we are able to follow and then on 17th there is the new moon in capricorn that means new initiatives regarding career regarding our habits regarding our karma basically 10th house capricorn is the sign of karma new initiatives regarding those areas will be taken yes because new, new moon shows new beginnings and then mars also joins uh, the sign of scorpio on 17th when this new moon is happening in capricorn now when mars goes into scorpio you can see that many the masculine aspect within us all right if you are a male or a female irrespective of that that undergoes some uh, dynamics of uh, feminine behavior also because watery sign uh, watery signs have that traits yes when fiery planets go inside them and now mars is the masculine person inside us who says yes go and achieve things go and do things don't just sit in the home <laughs> or even if you're sitting in the home go and do things achievers that is what mars is so when mars enters scorpio we can feel that oh now things that we are going to take initiative are becoming very secretive 
take care of the speech that we do not become very rough because scorpio is again ruled by the planet mars right and ketu also so now this new moon which happened on 17th is going to culminate in the lunar eclipse on 31st of this month okay january and this new moon oh my god mercury is retrograde i am making this video so many times but it's not happening all right so sorry for the interruption so now what i was telling is yes it's recording finally <laughs> i don't know till when it will record <laughs> okay so i was telling that the new moon which started on 17th in a uh, sagittarius went to the full moon in gemini in january first week right second of january we have the full moon in gemini as i said already and then we had the new moon <coughs> on 17th again january this time in the sign of capricorn and then the culmination will be in the lunar eclipse where moon is with rahu there in the nakshatra of ashlesha yes and sun is with ketu and mercury and venus oh my god four planets in the sign of capricorn and two in the sign of cancer so basically what lunar eclipse is lunar eclipse basically means that the manas the mind is getting clouded in the arc axis in the rahu ketu axis which means our ability to see this world to feel the things of this world to understand what this world is that is the mind the way we perceive things in this world that is getting clouded okay that means we have to be very clear with our spiritual pursuits with our spiritual enlightenment or with our connection to the divine otherwise we may feel that this new year has kicked on with some confusion you see because last year the eclipse was in february because it was from the sign of aquarius and sun will go to aquarius later yes but this time it's in capricorn itself so the new year begins with this eclipse and because it's a lunar eclipse chandra grahan as they say that means the mind the moon is now under the influence of rahu very strongly and this is a full moon that means the moment the a uh, new moon which started from 17th where we took new resolutions regarding our work our duty our structure commitment because sun is in capricorn yes and then the full moon comes by the end of january and because moon is very near to rahu it is the eclipse all right which means when we are actually seeing the moon it is like we are seeing moon rahu together there you will see that means we have to be very careful of not misinterpreting things as per our own definitions of what is right and what is wrong which simply means that the to the degree we are connected to the divine spiritually to that degree we will be able to see things in a clearer perspective otherwise we may feel oh my god what's going on is just the new year and i am so confused because see what rahu does is rahu will magnify this rahu amplifies this yes and when rahu amplifies or magnifies rahu is like sudden bomb when rahu does that with the moon we are left with emotions that go haywire and why i am saying emotions not because it is just another eclipse because it is in the sign of cancer rahu is in cancer don't forget that so because of that what happens we may feel that we are becoming too much overwhelmed when we are not able to do our duty because sun and these other planets they are in the sign of capricorn yes and also sun is with ketu do not forget this that eclipse is also coming after some time but what i am saying is when sun is with ketu there you may feel that what you decided to do in the sign of capricorn which is your duty structure commitment that you are not able to do or even if you have done it you will feel as if i have not done and then ketu puts that because see ketu doesn't have the head rahu has only the head right so the predicament is with eclipses the sun or the moon one of them will be there with rahu ketu so now here sun is with uh, ketu so then what happens 
our duty our structure our goals our ideals they can be hidden and because of that directly opposite is moon rahu where we can see the frustration all right so basically the only thing i would say for january is cool down <laughs> there's no need to hurry there's no need to rush is just the beginning of the new year and wherever this capricorn cancer axis is falling things will start in that zone all right especially if you are aries cancer libra or capricorn these four ascendants yes because they are movable ascendants and for them jupiter rahu ketu and these this eclipse will be in the kendra either in first fourth seventh or tenth all right so new things will begin in your physical life if you are born in any of these four ascendants because the kendra the angular houses represent our life the physical things that we are always striving to achieve or improve okay that doesn't mean if you are a taurus or gemini things will not be happening for you things will happen to you in that particular axis yes wherever cancer and capricorn is falling for january that axis is the most prominent axis where things can go out of control but don't worry it's just an illusion because rahu ketu is illusion right illusion doesn't mean it doesn't exist illusion simply means that it unnecessarily magnifies things and it creates doubts rahu magnifies and then ketu says oh but you are not able to do this so ketu is telling the sun see you thought you will do this but you couldn't do but then now rahu says okay see you couldn't do na Let, let's be frustrated no that's not right so meditation is recommended for uh, this month of january because i see sun is not only alone with ketu i mean apart from being with ketu it is also with mercury venus all right during this eclipse so whichever houses mercury venus is ruling in our chart those houses will also get affected in a very strong way we will feel that we are lacking in those houses also for example if you are a libra ascendant let me give you an example this eclipse is happening in your 410 axis okay and venus is ruling your first house and mercury is ruling your ninth house and then this eclipse is happening where ketu is involved all right i mean mercury venus is involved with ketu that means you may feel that some of the commitments which you took towards spirituality the ninth house or the lagna the first house maybe you wanted to go to the gym or something like that maybe you are not able to fulfill that and because of that you may throw all your frustration in the 10th house where moon rahu is you may be like no 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 then i couldn't do this now then i have to work i have to work i have to so hang on chill out <laughs> nothing has happened it is just the rahu ketu axis which is playing okay so be careful of the over obsession with wherever the sign cancer is falling as per your ascendant and the sense of deprivation or the sense of lack or the sense of being confused with wherever the sign capricorn is falling okay so by that the month ends and i hope till the time i record this video mercury blesses me and this doesn't stop again okay so once again sorry for the interruption and i hope i could explain so the new year starts and then it ends the first month with the lunar eclipse and be careful and the ending of the eclipse is like this S venus sun mercury ketu in the sign of capricorn then jupiter is in libra mars has gone to scorpio moon rahu in cancer and saturn is in sagittarius all right so overall the month will be very intense because of this positions of sun saturn and mercury venus been combust and the ending will be more intense because the eclipse is happening okay so take care that you do not become too much overly emotional because moon rahu is in cancer which is the sign of emotions okay cancer is the own sign of the moon and the eclipse is happening in the nakshatra of ashlesha which deals with poison and lot of that serpentine energy kundalini energy that is what uh, ashlesha deals with okay so we may become uh, too much harsh on ourselves or on people who are close to us so have mercy on yourself okay the world is not going to end if something goes wrong in january okay so that is it from my side i hope this video gets uploaded <laughs> by the time mercury goes direct okay so that is it from my side if you have any questions queries or comments 
then please let me know in the comments all right or if you want me to make any other video then also let me know in the comments and wish you a very very happy new year once again and if you want to book a consultation then approach me in my website below and if you like this video click the thumbs up and if you have still not subscribed in the last year then in this 2018 please do subscribe to it okay wish you good luck with the eclipses <laughs> goodbye see you happy new year